the box seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of your box seat. Yes, brought to you by our stable of sponsors and in the house this week we have Matthew Cross, a guest uh, appearance for him, which is great. Uh, Matthew, thanks so much for your time. Same to you, Greg. Hi to you, everybody. Jet's yeah, starting to get a little bit nippy down here in the 03 at the moment. Some frosty mornings, but as we know, the racing game continues. It's that time of year where we kind of get a little bit slower in terms of the meetings and, and slow down a touch. But what about the week ahead, particularly at Alexandra Park and the week that has been with the wonderful night we had at the Addington Raceway? So plenty to look forward to and plenty to look back on as well, Greg, and looking forward to being part of the show again. All right, I'm looking forward to having you uh, as part of it too. Let's have a look at what's ahead for you on your box seat. We will have the big Alexandra Park Premier Preview. Massive night there Friday night leading into the Trillion Trust uh, Auckland Cup the following week. Addington's Premier Night from last Friday night was exceptional. We had a chance to catch up with Tony Barron there about his star mare, Queen Elida. It's finals day on Sunday at Rungiora, so we'll preview those uh, two big finals. Aussie action with Garrards, there's plenty of that at our hand. Milk best bets of the week but we need to get straight into the Alexandra Park preview it is the second running of the Roy Purden Memorial self-assured uh, has to be hard to beat Matthew off the back of this exceptional run winning the Dawson Harford Limited Messenger Championship yes he got the front comfortably off copy that who's not a rival nor is better Eclipse can go as slightly unlucky in behind them but when you're breaking 54 seconds for your last half at this level, they're not very often going to catch you. He's one of our great horses, isn't he? And I, I know often that it's been touted that he, that he has been, I guess, underrated or, or not got the kudos that he deserves. But I'm, I'm sure that plenty of people will agree that he is one of our great all-time paces, self-assured. Bit of a tricky race for him this week, though, Greg, in particular with... Some good beginners drawn in front of him and his, his very talented stable mate, Akuta, drawn equally off the 20 metres. In terms of the race unfolding, I guess there's a couple of keys to it, Greg. One of them will be, how does Old Town Road step and can he hold the advantage of the two back markers? And, and where does Kango kind of sit? If Kango makes a good beginning, I'm sure that David Butcher wouldn't be shy to go up and, and make a race of it. So... It's going to be a real tactical battle. I don't think that a horse like Old Town Road could probably come off the back of a self-assured or a cooter, but equally, you might be thinking, thinking the same vice versa. Old Town Road's got an incredibly high turn of foot, as we saw here in this particular workout at Pukekohe, but could be in a little bit of a tricky spot. If Kango were to step forward and control the race off the 10 metres, then Old Town Road is likely to be settling, say, third or fourth with self-assured and a cooter right in behind them so there could be a risk of him being left parked but you've got Zachary Butcher on board which is a, a massive key I don't think self-assured's over the line Greg although his record would say he's the best horse in the race I think he can win it so can Akuta and Old Town Road who's just going to keep getting better and better so really intriguing and tactical affair for the Roy Purden Memorial your thoughts? Well I spoke to Mark Purden yesterday and asked him where his two boys were at and he said look I can't really split them. They're both in a good space. And we often hear Mark and or Natalie refer to horses being in a really good space. He said, both of them are. I said, OK, well, who's more favoured this week? He said, I really can't. I, I, all I can say to you is whichever one gets the right run and you know one's going to tag the other um, is their best chance of winning. Looking at the market, Matthew, we've got... Uh, self-assured at two dollars and eighty cents. Favorite Old Town Road two seventy, three eighty a cooter, and Kango, who was very good in that workout, eleven dollars. He was also second in this race behind Self-Assured last year. And Natalie Rasmussen, uh, of course, has only been beaten once, and that was in the race by Grins when driving Self-Assured. She's back on board as she will be for the Trillion Trust Auckland Cup next week. I think he's still the horse to beat. He he has. So many uh, triggers, I suppose, that he can use. Um, he can sit parked, he can lead, he can come from off the speed. So I think that gives him the advantage, Matt. But I think the bookies have 
Uh, they haven't really settled on one or the other, have they? Old Town Road was good in that workout, but can go fought back and beat him. Don't really want to take too much out of that, but I just thought with that extra racing that Self Assured has had over both Akuta and Old Town Road that it is his advantage this week. And I think too, Greg, one other thing that we're going to get a really good guide on is, is what the market does leading up to the race. Once our intelligent punters, if you will, start having a crack, I think there will be somewhat of a movement around the top three in the market with the potential of, of one being singled out once people work out in their minds and on paper how the map of the race might unfold. I do reckon we'll get a guide on, on one of the three horses. Hard to split them though, isn't it? And then you throw in horses like... Smithy's Terra Bark and he's a sport off the front, which are, are all sort of high level intermediate, if not open class horses in their own right, which could make it hard for those at the back. And, and great to see Colin and Julie DeFilippi campaigning another horse up there in the north with he's a sport who is clearly more than capable. And having Morris McKendry on board, I guess, is another big tick as well. Yep, absolutely it is. Looking forward to seeing how he handles that right-handed way of going. The second running of the Roy Purden, one of the features out of Alexandra Park this week. And they've actually got a promotion this week where if you just come on course, enter the competition, you'll go in the draw to be a part owner of Self Assured for the Trillion Trust Auckland Cup next week, Matthew. And uh, I think Harness Race New Zealand putting up $1,000 if he happens to win that. Uh, but the package includes uh, two people at the top of the park next week, the opportunity to go and meet with Mark Purden and Self Assured in a frame photograph to uh, uh, recognise uh, what a great night at the race it'll be. So all you have to do is turn up to Alexandra Park and they still have some packages available uh, for next week as well. Go to alexandrapark.co.nz and you will see those there. All right, let's move on to the unbeaten filly. Her name is Millwood Nike. She takes her place this week, uh, Matthew, in the Magnus Benro Sire Stakes at Group 1 level. Here she was was in front on this very wet night at Alexandra Park and when I spoke to Natalie last week about what sort of level she is she said look she's an open class mare racing against her own age group that's how she feels um, unbeaten in 13 comes up with barrier two there's a lot of ticks there I, I suppose the only way to um, approach this race is okay so what a minx is likely to sit in the trail that's how most people would read it uh, fortify has done very little wrong but is unlikely to get across you would think at the start so how did you see the group one uh, fillies feature this week look I, I wouldn't be surprised greg if someone chanced their arm at the start whether it be a sweet diamond or a fortify to try and go forward and if you mark pert and drawn barrier two with mill with nike you look across there's a couple having a crack. There's no hurry. You know that the lead's going to be there. If Mark Purden does push the button, what a minx grabs its back immediately. Virtually impossible to beat her. They can't beat her if she leads Millwood Nike. I guess if you're trying to make the money, though, you're looking to see who is going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons at the start. And I guess the logical could be a horse like Fortify. Natalie Rasmussen on board. If Mark Purden looks right, sees Nat coming with Fortify, Happy days. Let her go. I know the lead's there, so therefore they could become the logical Quinella option, but she is just a full-blown excitement machine, Greg, in a class of her own. Beautiful, big, long stride on her. For a filly, she's incredibly willing. I can't see her beating. Yeah, $1.10 the price uh, they've put up uh, for her, so she'll be through virtually every multi. Uh, you yeah, $12.45. $10 Sweet Diamond, who was excellent, of course, in the Southland Oaks. Uh, her record at Alexandra Park is not great, but she's a way better horse than what she uh, has uh, been in the past when she's been there. So looking forward uh, to the Group 1, as I am the Anzac Cup, and Oscar Bonavina gets his chance, uh, Matthew, to get back into winning form for mine. Uh, he was unlucky. Here was Muscle Mountain in front, Resolve in the trail. Oscar doesn't want to get to the outside of John Dunn there, so goes back to the inside. And, yeah, I reckon he, he look, he wouldn't have won, but he might have pushed very, very hard for second. And um, I think he, he's a terrific winning chance. Yes, he has to come off 20 metres. When I spoke to Mark yesterday about him, he said he, he's really happy at the moment. He's really happy with him. The horse is happy. Uh, the bookmakers are as well. They've put up $3.60 and... Well, I've made him my best bet of the week, Matthew. I think he can absolutely win this race. Um, there's some interesting runners here, aren't there? Uh, Mystic Mash, Euro Cash makes his way north. It's a big step up for him. 
uh, Matuatana off the back of winning an uncut gem at his last start. He's obviously in form, all cashed up, made uh, his second sojourn into New Zealand uh, a winning one by winning last time. So Elder Baron Zeus is there as a very quick beginner and obviously majestic man. So it's a good race when you consider Artie by the Hills not there and obviously Muscle Mountain aren't there. So add them to the mix for next week's Road Cup and should be an interesting old go. Yeah, it will be. I, I think Greg Oscar Bonavina would be probably the quickest horse that I've seen over, say, 400 metres. I, I don't think he would outstay, you know, your greats like Sunday Sun or, or Bolt for Berlitz. But in terms of pure speed, he would match most paces. I've seen on the Ultimate Race Book at Addington a few times where he's even broken the 26 second mark for the last 400. If he makes a clean beginning and gets the right drag into it, I do think he's the horse to beat. Remembering Elder Baron Zeus coming to the 2,200 metres from the stand, I think it's a real plus for him. He could be the horse who's slightly over the odds at $10. He won the Group 1 Australian Trotting Champs over 2,700, I think it was, from the standing start. And you're right, he's generally a very fast beginner. So if he got the right run through at the start, I would say that he's not too far inferior to Oscar Bonavina in terms of the speed. At the prices, I think Oscar Bonavina's win price is about right at 360. But look, I'd be more than happy just to have a little bit of a nibble on Elder Baron Zeus, Greg, particularly if the race was run to suit. I think at $10, he should be a little bit shorter than what he is. Matu Atana was huge at Addington the other night. He, he had absolutely no right to win that race. He's gone 313 and change on the ultimate race book, and that was his first run for a couple of months. And you can never discount Paul then. And then you've got the horses off the front that you mentioned, the likes of Resolve, Eurocash, who's been racing well here in the South, and, and Mystic Max, of course, who placed in the Sire Stakes this meeting last year, could all hold an advantage. And over the 2200, that's obviously a big factor. But I'm not going to drop Elder Baron Zeus, Greg. I think the bookies have put a bit of meat on the bone for us at $10, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that shorten come start time. Yeah, Sarah O'Reilly to drive Matuatana as we have a look at the market. $3.60 uh, for Oscar Bonavina. $10 Matthews Value runner there, Elder Baron Zeus. $11 all cashed up. And off the front, you've got Mystic Max at $4.80. 950 euro cash, 650 resolve, and $8 love in the port, who was actually hitting the line pretty strongly uh, last time at the park too. Excellent edition of the HR Fiskins and Sons Anzac Cup. When you look back, Matthew, across who's won this race, it all started uh, 10 years ago when I Can Do's it won it. Since then, Stent, the last three years, has been Sunday Sun. Mombay's been a winner of this race too. So it really is uh, the who's who of trotting have gone about in this race, the key lead up, of course, to next week's Row Cup. And back to a stand as well, I think just levels things up a little bit for those horses who are on the lower side of the ratings. They get their opportunity with the standing start to get that advantage over those horses who are, are drawn off the handicap. And as I said, over 2,200 metres, it's not an easy thing to work into it. So a, a lot will uh, come out of this race towards the Row Cup, but it's obviously hard to gauge how that Row Cup is going to stack up without your horses like Muscle Mountain and Artie by the Hill. I do think Muscle Mountain's still clearly the... The pinnacle is the benchmark at the moment, but a great rendition uh, should be on Friday night. Absolutely, it should be, as it will be for the Lone Star Sires Stakes. And we'll have a look at uh, Love Me 2 winning the Harness Million race in front on this occasion and too strong for them in the hands of co-trainer and driver uh, Dylan Ferguson. Blair Orange picks up the drive uh, this week, Matthew, and has to come off the second row, so it will not be an easy task, but expect a very big run uh, from him uh, because he's got a few mates there with him, including Tectonic, uh, who's off the unruly. Sunny Sisters off the second row too. Uh, the Ivy League, another for Paul Nen, who has a strong hand in the race with Confessional, and I spoke to Paul about uh, how the team had travelled up and what his expectations were, and he said, all of them are fine. Uh, he was going to give them a nice wee blowout uh, this morning, being Wednesday morning, but um, it's a good race. I also spoke to Mark Purden about high en energy and where she's at. He said, I expect her to be improved off that last run, and she's come up a $2 favourite here, Matthew, off a good draw. The one thing you know about her, though, is she doesn't possess early gate speed, so she'll settle in the first half of the field, but don't think she'll be normal All-Stars runner running straight to the lead, taking uh, control and dominating, and saying that she's absolutely still the horse to beat.
Yeah, I think that's a big key to with this race, Greg, what you just said, is, is don't look at it in thinking that from barrier four, Mark Purden will be going forward and trying to control the race because I could almost guarantee that won't be the case. I would imagine that Mark Purden and, and Natalie Rasmussen, who's driven the horse in the past as well, are very conscious that she does have a few tricks, particularly heading out of the straight at Addington. She has generally wanted to run out the gate. Now, I couldn't really see that being too different for her with her attitude at Alexandra Park. If she was left on her own to the first bend, then there could be a big risk of that happening once again. I think Confessional might be the horse to beat, Greg. He'll go forward, and if he were to lead, much like his stablemate Masterly did in this race last year, then it could be a total repeat. He's a very good stayer. Confessional from a very good family, two-year-old trotting boy of the year from last year. And with his barrier draw, I think he gets the chance to hold the advantage over the back runners at the start. Tectonic's also a very good horse. He comes from the Pawnee and Stable as well. He can really peel some strong splits for the last mile. Love me too. He's a proper horse. He's a really genuine, open-class horse in the making. And then you put in a horse like Sonny's sister, Greg, who went to the workouts the Auckland Way at the start of the month, and I thought she looked very comfortable. Morris McKendry driver in that workout gave him a big head start and, and dead heated that workout, albeit on some fairly sedate late sectionals, but she's clearly a horse who's got at least a little bit of her brother's ability. A little bit tricky from the second row. She's very raw, but does, does have enough ability to, to make a race of it. But I just think in terms of how it would unfold, Greg, if confessional leads, he'll take all sorts of stopping. I reckon Paul Nairn will go forward, keep them rolling and just make it all too hard for anything to catch him. Yeah, well, he's won it with card on, a lot of love. You mentioned masterly, so he knows how to win this race. And I'm with you. I reckon the $5 is almost very, very good shopping. Um, and you could do a Michael Guerin and play two horses, have the majority of your money uh, on him and uh, cover by, uh, by backing uh, High Energy, who looks the other logical uh, chance in the race. Excellent contest. The Lone Star New Zealand size stakes uh, final there. The lead up, of course, to the Derby next week. Continuing our look at Alexandra Park, uh, let's now have a look at the younger trotters, the two-year-old trotters. And, well, you can't but be impressed by the moonshine. Uh, two from two, Nikki Chilcott in raptures about this horse. High Step got closest here and was first up, Matthew, and is from that same very good family as uh, High Energy. It'll be improved, and Mark said uh, no doubt she has improved, but this, the moonshine, and these were Mark Purden's words as well, he said, looks like a three-year-old now. Looks like a big, strong, bold trotter who's going to be very, very hard to beat in whatever race they line up against. And if she leads again, Greg, on what should be a better surface than what it was there last time out, she'll take all sorts of stopping, considering that you're going to have a horse like High Step who's probably going to be giving her a similar head start at the top of the straight. I know High Step took ground off the Moonstone, but I just get the feeling looking at Nikki Chilcott on the sulky there that there was a couple of gears left even. You're right, she's just got that real brute look about her, which we often don't see with the juvenile Philly trotters. I think she'll take all sorts of beating again. $2, fair enough price. We can have it all as an interesting runner. I think maybe just a little bit immature versus the Moonstone and High Step, but we can have it all as, as clearly got the ability and I would find it hard for anything else to be, to be winning the race. Levi has a nice draw off the inside, but was well held by the Moonstone uh, at its last start. Gorgeous horse, Greg. Monkey bones, not too many of them around at the moment, and you won't miss her, just hoping that the weather's a little finer so she can look a, a little more flashy for us there on Friday night. Yeah, she looks outstanding. Looking forward uh, to that clash once again. And we've got a couple of mares races over the next uh, two weeks. So let's have a look at uh, this week's edition. It's the third on the program, the lather up at Woodlands. And here was uh, Manhattan finishing second in her uncut gem. Uh, Dance Till Dawn was in front. Uh, very brave in second, Manhattan. We know her great modus, Matthew, is when she is able to lead. And uh, she's done that at Alexandra Park before. Uh, uh, she won in December, of course, the lead up to the Queen of Hearts and then uh, finished second behind All-American Lover. Uh, she really likes the park. She's only missed a placing there once in her seven appearances. Seven horse field. You would imagine Matthew White would be pressing forward and uh, would hope to get the front because once she does get there, she, they, they just don't want to run past her. Another horse out of that uncut gent was Folklore's run was exceptional considering we know 
the normal pattern of folklore is to come with one run at them, sat parked and was very, very brave in third and doesn't mind racing at the park either. Yeah, in Manhattan, considering that run at Addington, she was she was first up. And in that sort of grade with those racings, you often see horses perform best when they have had a run under their belt. Once Dance Till Dawn led that race, it was going to be always a big challenge for Manhattan to pick her up. But over 1,700, Maddie White's got a good record on her. You mentioned she likes Alexandra Park. If she can lead, she's clearly the horse to stop. Folklore has a good record around Alexandra Park, and I reckon she's going as good as she ever has. And you can't really discount any of the other horses' as chances either because in their own right, they all have very capable records. But if you had to be on one, Greg, you would say that Manhattan, if she worked forward, led the race. She's an incredibly hard horse to get past. And I think that if she's somewhere around that $1.80, $2 mark, I think that would be a fair enough price for her. Yeah, well, it's a great night at Alexandra Park on uh, Friday night. The next two Fridays are going to be exceptional and uh, we'll have a big preview out of our Auckland studio uh, next week with Michael Guerin back uh, previewing all of the Group 1 features from there. As we go to our first break, though, let's go back to the inaugural running of the Roy Purden. The great man who trained over 2,000 winners can go in front and Mark Purden doing the right thing, winning his dad's, his late dad's race was self-assured. Self-assured on the outside of Kango who kicks. Oh, self-assured, I'd say a nose. Self-assured, maybe just a nose. Peepers on this outstanding trotting race mare, Queen Elida. She's going to spank them. Queen Elida, eyes on the clock, 153. Wow, that must have been a buzz. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I got a little bit emotional actually, Greg. Yeah, she's um, just been a super mare, but uh, I think probably that was almost close to her best run. Yeah, 153 around Menangle, win number 22. Going back to when she was here, did, did you know the ability was always there? Yeah, always. She was always ABC, right from when we, we broke her in as a weanling. And she was always ABC. She just uh, just a lovely filly, good type, beautifully gated. Her, her biggest attributes are gait. And, uh, of course, love you out of that breed. They just get better and better, and that's what she's doing. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Queen Kenny herself won nine races and was placed in a row cup. So, And it goes back a wee bit further than that, too. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, just a super family. You only got to talk to Phil and them, and he, he just keeps saying they just get better and better. And as I say, that's what she's doing. So uh, it's been a hell of a ride, and touch wood, it's not finished yet. Yep, well, she's honed in on a half a million dollars Kiwi anyway. What's she got left in this campaign? Uh, well, she's a very gross stewer. So, um, Lil, I just found out today, He's I just leave it up to him, but um, she's going to have a couple of free for alls and a couple of mares races. But the main aim is the Inter Dominions in December in Brisbane, and then uh, she'll be back for the Great Southern Star. Yeah. Well, you hate a trip away, so that gives you another couple of reasons to head across the Tasman. Yeah, we love a trip, and uh, yeah, she's just been yeah, she's just been a, a great ride. So uh, yeah, as I say, long may it continue. Well, Lil's given her a fair rap this week and said that he wouldn't be scared of taking on anything in Australasia. Does that mean she could possibly race in New Zealand, or is that not really on the cards? Uh, it's really up to him. Yep. We've left it up to Lil. Lil and um, Chris Alford have just done a super job looking after her. We just. Yeah, Buff and I have just been there for the ride, but in saying that, like you've got the, the Row Cups coming up um, in a couple of weeks in Auckland, so maybe 12 months' time, that could be her swan song, you know, if we bring her back. But it's, it's totally up to those those two. They they look after and, and they've done the job. So, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just enjoy it while it's there. So great to catch up with Tony Barron. Gee, she's a good mare, isn't she, Matthew? Queen Elida, she's from a, a wonderful family, as we heard there. But uh, I'd really like to see her race here when she does uh, come back, because obviously they're going to breed from her. And, yeah, maybe next year's Row Cup is on the radar. 
Aren't they having a great time as well? And I, good to see uh, TR heading over there as well and, and enjoying what is a grand run with a horse who has just got better and better. And she's a, a real ball to look at, isn't she? Often we see the, the, the good girls when they have to take on the boys. They are just a different cut of horse, very much like we, we talked about the Moonstone earlier on, taking on uh, the other two-year-olds. I'd love to see her back here. I remember when she first raced here, she only had a, a couple of starts and you probably wouldn't have picked at the time that she would go on to do great things. And she'll just add to the already strong broodmare base that Tony Barron has as well. So good luck to them. And, and I hope that they're thoroughly enjoying what is a, a brilliant run that they're having. Uh, Brent Lilly, since going over there in Australia, he's just gone from strength to strength. And Great to see that the Kiwis are combining to take some of the Australian spoils. Yep, and we'll get to see uh, her, of course, at the Inter Dominion. That would be the Moonstone as opposed to the Moonshine that I think I was calling it before. But if it keeps on winning, or she does, they'll be drinking Moonshine or whatever they want to drink. All right, moving along to Addington from uh, last Friday night. Premier Harness Racing action it was at the Group 1 level. And Don't Stop Dreaming is providing a, a wonderful uh, dream, if you like, for the connections, the Dunfords, Mark and Dennis, and of course Ian Dobson, Natalie Rasmussen in the bike, her fifth win in this very good race. And uh, he just dashed away again. It's Don't Stop Dreaming inside the 100. Two lengths away then to Sinbad, but he's doing it with great comfort and will continue to manifest greatness. Don't Stop Dreaming by a length and a half. Second in Sinbad, third across was Triple G. Well, he's just a neat racehorse. He's just got everything, Greg, you know. Um, like he showed last week, that gate speed, and tonight he showed he's really tough as well. Um, you can just drive him however you know you see fit, and I think that's just what makes him such a good little horse. It was a rare race, or a strange race, because you're actually able to dictate it from the middle of the field for the first half of it anyway. Yeah, well, that's sort of gone hard enough, I thought, um, and I just sort of got amongst it. I really only had to run a 1,000 metres, and even though I was up the track for a bit, um, you know, it didn't really matter to him. He's such an economical little guy, um, and they just put a fair bit of pace on down the back, and, you know, I thought, oh, if any of them are good enough, they can outstay him, but, yeah, he's just such a great little horse. Yeah, and a really good run from Sinbad as well. He came from back in the field and to run you close, and he's a work in progress, isn't he? He's definitely a lovely horse. He's probably just one of those guys, he just lost a bit of confidence um, but I think he's got the talent and I wouldn't be surprised come you know a little bit more distance and this and that he's, he's one that'll match it with the best of them. Well that's your fifth win on the side so congratulations. Thank you Greg, thanks. Well the winner was too good but he was great. Yeah really happy with his run Greg you know we all know how good the winner is so uh, now we took a few lengths off him and you know he's run a very good second. Look you've been on him a couple of times, few times now, he looks a work in progress, is that how it is with him? Yeah, it feels like he's going to be better with, you know, a bit more age on him and also a bit more distance, I think, will really suit him. So, you know, he's, he's got a bright future. Gee, he's come a long way. He's come a long way, right, Greg. Um, he always showed a bit of promise as an early horse and uh, had a few wee niggly problems, but um, lightly raced and he's sort of done it hard most races he's been, well, every race he's been in, so he's still stuck to his guns the whole way up the straight, so... Couldn't be happier. Is that it, grand final wise for him? And does he have a nice break now? And there's a bit to look forward to. Yeah, he'll go out, and uh, yeah, like you say, there is a bit to look forward to, especially if he keeps improving the way he sort of has uh, the last few months. So um, yeah, we'll see him sort of in the spring now. Yeah, dominant performance from Don't Stop Dreaming again, Matthew. But uh, gee, there were some good runs in behind. Sinbad uh, was excellent. Triple G, um, he's got Derby written all over him. And Who's Delight made up a lot of ground too. And if he can sort of get his act together uh, race tractability-wise, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, you think about horses like Sherlock, Merlin, Merlin rather. I think this year's three-year-old crop is uh, one full of depth and there's going to be a lot of open class stars come out of it. Yeah, certainly, Greg. Don't stop dreaming. You, you just can't take anything away from the pure class and, and the tractability that he's got versus a horse like Sinbad, who you see has got the Murphy blind on the near side, double arm spreader as well. And he, he's a bigger, more rangy horse who I think, much like you've said, Blair and Natalie as well, you're all pretty much saying once the derby comes around, then we're going to see the best of that horse. And I totally agree with you. On the ultimate race book, he's gone his last mile in 151.3, Sinbad. They don't get much quicker than that around the Addington Raceway. That was the quickest last mile of the night. Quickest last half of the night was with Who's Delight, 53.98. You're right. If he ever switches on and becomes a more mature prospect, then he's going to win a nice race somewhere along the way. Just in terms of the overall time, Greg, 2.19.8. Now, if you're not familiar with times around the Addington Raceway, if you break 2.22, you're a good horse. 
They've gone 219.8 on a freezing cold night in the middle of autumn. The record over the 1980 is 219, which was held on a 25 degree day in the middle of Kapwe. So a massive run from the winner and even better runs probably from a horse like Sinbad just in behind. Looking forward to the, the back end of the year as well, Greg. I always enjoy seeing how horses where the, the top echelon can keep improving. Does something else catch up and make it interesting come derby time? I wouldn't be surprised to see a horse like Sinbad continue to get better and better. And you're right, throw in Sherlock, throw in Merlin, which I was looking forward to seeing that match up there on Friday night. We're just going to have to wait a little bit longer before that eventuates. Yeah, and it sounds like Merlin's uh, foot abscess is not too big a deal and uh, he will still be making his way uh, to the Sunshine State as part of that Queensland carnival. The rising sun uh, on his radar where he'll meet Leap to Fame, who we'll see a little bit later on in the programme. Let's move to the Hydroflow Country Cups final and the race, I reckon, Matthew, of the year thus far. Gee, there was some moves here. Probably equals uh, the Waikato Flying Mile, but here was John. John Hay in front, thought he was home, Wheels of Fortune, Mighty Louie who had blown the start, storms home for young Corbin Newman and what was his biggest success in his career thus far. Mighty Louie won it, Mighty Louie by a length of the line beat Wheels of Fortune and get up and dance. Well it was there for everyone to see, your smile as you went across the line, massive result for you Corb. Yeah, yeah, probably the biggest of my career Greg, yeah, so I'm not wrapped with that, yeah. Tell me about the run because um, there probably weren't too many stages in the race. Those watching were thinking Mighty Louie would be winning. No, well, I lost, uh, I don't know how much loss it started, a fair bit, missed away. But yeah, it, it wasn't in the race till, till about the, the 600, the quarter, if, if, if that, you know, like. So he's, he's done a super job, yeah, to come from where he has to win, yeah. He's a remarkable horse because when you think about it, and he, he went to Sydney basically because everyone thought he was a miler and that sort of racing would suit him and it didn't and he's come back and now he's won a two mile race coming from last. Yeah, it's, it's, it's horses, isn't it? Like yeah. I suppose, you know, he, 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 look on paper he was going to be a, a great miler horse but he's come back and he's done he's done a great job in the, in the stands and, and, and whatnot. So, look, look, yeah, can't be happier. I know he's your favourite horse. They tell me that He's no, numero uno around the stable for you. So how special to win the Hydroflow Country Cups final? Oh, yeah, Greg, very special. You know, he's been a good horse to me. Give me my first group one drive and now a, a big race win. So, no, look, it's been, been super. You know, like Robert, Robert and, and Jenna and Johnny have been really good to me and, and the owner, Robin, too. So, look, it's, it's great to get one back for them, yeah. Congratulations to you, mate. Well done. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, his first group one drive, of course, in South Coast Arden's Harness Jewels. And... It was a great run. He lost uh, a very big stretch of ground at the start. Matthew uh, has had to round up a really good horse in Wheels of Fortune. A couple of other notables out of the race for me. Franco Norton. He actually began too quickly for his own good. Couldn't get the lead off Art Attack. Ended up in just every place that Craig Thornley didn't want to be. And his run was a total forgive. He, he's a very, very good horse. And I, I can see him probably in the big dance, the IRT New Zealand Cup, later on in the year, along with a few others out of this race. Yeah, well, they've gone 358.9, so Mighty Louie. Wheels of Fortune, who I would almost guarantee is good enough to be in the Cup. Get Up and Dance was Huge. probably equally as good as, as Wheels of Fortune in the finish. And then Heisenberg, who was just one of the most honest horses in Canterbury. I reckon hands down, Greg, I haven't been around that long, but I think that that race is one of the most pure and genuine horse races that I've ever seen. Yep. There was just so much going on. You think of those old school New Zealand cups where there's the three wide train the entire way and everybody's just so intently watching. And then you have to check yourself at the top of the straight when you look up and think, is that actually Mighty Louie? He did himself 50 metres at the start and he's about to win it. My question to you, Greg, would be, why is it not a Group 1? Uh, it's only its second running. So so last year, and I know there's been some changes over the years where normally you had to have at least three runnings of, of, of a race to justify it getting to, to Group 1 level. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if it ever will get there, but I suppose it's, it's up for dis discussion. But... The way it was run, it deserves to be. <laughs> anyway, it was uh, it was such I, I a deep admit. race. And, of course, All-American Lover ran second last year behind the Falcon, went on and won the Queen of Hearts. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a race that has to be followed, that's for sure. Well, I've called a dozen 
more group ones that were were way more boring than that was. So, and I think for the the caliber of horses, any horse can go in it. If you obviously, it would be hard for some of our more genuine open class horses to win some of those races off the handicaps. But it was a, I reckon, in terms of the caliber of race, it was as good as the group ones that we get. So, I guess the question could be asked to HRNZ and the people in charge that potentially next year after the running of, of that race on Friday night that it could be changed to a Group 1, $90,000 stake. But nice to see Corbin Newman, he, he works really hard at, at Robert and uh, Jenna Dunn's base, get the, the win. He was probably on the least favoured of the two. How about there being two $70 shots, Greg? Yeah. I can't say that I've ever seen there being two uh, $40 shots win at the Addington Raceway, but two $70 shots was a tricky night to be a punter. But I'm sure that there would have been some loyal... $2 each way fans who got themselves a little bit of a nibble there at Mighty Louie. Yep, and of course that other winner at longer odds was Superstar Legend, which takes its place again uh, this week. Let's uh, move on to the Welcome Stakes with Avon City Ford. This was a really good contest uh, as well, but it was an upset of sorts. It's with Avon City Ford and uh, down the outside, it's tough for rounding uh, up a decent sort of field, uh, beating another horse on that debut, and a delighted Katie Cox, the co-trainer and driver, had this to say post-race. It's tough, beat a little silence. Bronson ran third. Wow, what a night. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it's been pretty good, that's for sure. Right, you got a group win, of course, with time up the hill, but this will be even more special. In the early stages of your training career, you're always looking for a good horse, and you've found one. Oh, definitely. Yeah, he's a really nice horse. I'm just lucky the way it worked out, you know, with, with Ray giving me the opportunity to have him and then the owners that came in to sort of back me pretty early on when he was a yearling and, yeah, you yeah, know, they trusted me that I thought he was all right and yeah, he's turned out to be, yeah. Yeah, he certainly has. So how did that all come about? How, how did, well, why did Ray say, hey, Katie, you should have a crack with this one? Um, well, I guess early on Ray was actually quite good when I worked at Jamie Gamerson's and he gave me a few drives on Cullen's Mercy, who yep. it's tough's out of, and... Yeah, you know, so it sort of came from there and then we broke in, yeah, broke the horse in, it's tough and I liked him and Ray sort of, he said, oh, would you have anyone that would sort of go in with him, you know, yep. since he had some air and he has a few others, so I, yeah, I went to a few of our owners and, no, they were really good, some Australian ones and ones from up north and, yeah, yep, so, and ones from down here. So. Yep. What about tonight and going into a group race first up, when did the plan sort of hatch and how confident were you? Oh, we trialled it really well. To be honest, there was a race a fortnight ago, a two-year-old race, that I hoped would have gone ahead and it didn't go ahead. And then, yeah, so I didn't really want to race him last Friday night if it was a wee bit close first up, so we gave him a trial, Ashburton, last week instead. And, you know, he came through that well and it was a matter of there wasn't a lot else for him and I sort of was confident he would, yeah, put his best foot forward, you know. You wouldn't be confident a horse would win in a race like that first up, but no, I knew he'd go an honest race anyway. And what do you do with him now? Um, we'll just see, we'll give him a few quiet days and yeah, I guess there's a sapling stakes and yeah, he's not actually paid up for the size stakes and that, but that's probably alright, like he's quite a big horse, he'll be better in time anyway. But. Well, it's been a massive night for you, congratulations, uh, well deserved and yeah, you make sure you celebrate it in an appropriate way. Uh, thank you Greg. Pretty hard thing to do, come to Addington, win a group race first up, but you've done it. Oh yes, it was a big thrill, first time I've ever had a two year old to race and we knew he was smart from early on and now everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight he was absolutely outstanding, what a job Katie's done with him too. Fantastic, you know, she loved him from day one and I can see why. Yep. So, yep, and it's out of a good dad and the mother was good as well, so uh, all pleased, T yep. ticked another box for her. Yep. The old betters across uh, Christian yeah. Cullen, it's a, it's a great cross isn't it? Yep, it's, the mare's in foal to him as well, so hopefully that goes well. well it's a big thrill for you, congratulations yep. tonight tried all my life to get a good one and finally got something that goes okay. Very happy. Good on you. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, wasn't he? Uh, Ray Vreeke, uh, Cullen's Mercy, she won five races. Matthew, it's tough, she's tough. Uh, everything with tough in its name. This one is not only tough, it's got the better's delight speed as well. So uh, what a huge result for Katie and all of the owners. They were over the moon. Yeah, the, the, watching them down in the birdcage, Greg, post the race, they were all just full of elation, none more so than Ray Riku, who's had a grand run with that breed and just the old better's delight factor. You can never go wrong, can you, with our, our champion sire that is better's delight. Uh, the second horse, A Little Silence, who was on debut for the Negus family and, and Matt Purvis and Ricky Martha, it was a very creditable run to get into second position. 
That horse has run the quickest last 400 metres of the night on the Ultimate Race Book. Has It's tough. 26.49 on the way home. And he looks as though he's a horse who's going to get better and better. Now, there's a two-year-old race next Thursday at the Addington Raceway, which is probably good timing for these two-year-olds with the sapling stakes being 10 days after at Ashburton. So looking forward to seeing how the, the two-year-old ranks unfold and then obviously through the, the back end of the program. It's a shame that he's not on the size stakes, but I guess there's always the opportunity if you want to to, to pay the late payment. But I was so pleased for, for Katie Cox getting herself a double there on on Friday night with two absolute pearlers of drives. Yeah, and we're about to see the next of those, uh, Matthew, because uh, with Hara de Trotters, the uh, Heather Williams Memorial, time up the hill, in front, dominating from the top end. Uh, she hasn't had all favours in her recent runs, but this was a complete domination. Very brave in second, Paramount Empress. Uh, she's probably come to the end of it uh, and uh, I Dream of Jeannie in third, but it was Katie Cox again getting the job done. I reckon that's pretty satisfying. It is very, very satisfying. You know, it is satisfying. I know you set it for this race and what I liked tonight was Katie's positivity. She knew she was on the best horse and once she got the front, I reckon your confidence levels would have been going up. The confidence of her level's going up when I said she got through a quarter and 31. I thought, well, we've got to show now, and then she ran at home in 27. You've got to be very good to beat 27 and, you know, in that rate. And, um, Natalie's horse was going pretty good, and I dream of Jeannie, you know, they were all running on good, but she just had the wicket on them today, so. Yeah, well, she's got pacing speed, as we know, so to be able to run home in 56, that made her incredibly hard to get past. Now, she's won about 100,000 since her three-year-old days, so... A bit of that's her ability, but also it hasn't been that easy to place her, but I think you've done a pretty good job. Oh, well, we've tried to place her where we can, you know. Like I, I was always one that has growled for a long time. They don't have mares and fillies races, so every time there's been one, I've tried to line up, and that's basically what we've tried to do, you know. You know. And I'm not frightened to take the boys on, because we think she's good enough to beat them sometimes. Well, you are group one place behind the best at the moment in, in Muscle Mountain, so I suppose the question now, Michael, is what do you do with it? Well, you just probably, if I put Tender out for a spell, I don't think I'd get her back again as good because she took so long between a three- and four-year-old career to come back trotting. So we'll probably pot around with the winter, but it is in the back of my mind. We probably, if the, if the Auckland Road Cup was a mobile, you know where we'd be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and it, it isn't about the money with her. This is a real family no. horse, and you, you guys just love bringing her to the races. We just like going to the races with her, and we want to breathe holes out of her, yeah. yeah. I'm 71, 71, 72 this year, you know, you better get it while you can. <laughs> Five years before you get one of the races. So, you know. Well, congratulations to you and the family. I know it means a lot. And uh, Alex Williams, um, Heather was a huge part of the, of the trotting game. And to win their race will also be pretty special. Oh, yes. He's a very, very good sponsor. And he's always been proud to come and shake your hand whether you win or lose. So and that's the first time we've beaten one of, you know, beaten one of his home. <laughs> the All Stars. Yeah. Yeah. Good on you, They're hard to beat. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, he was keen to get out of the interview, wasn't he, Matthew? But um, she's just, just been a marvel, hasn't she? She's uh, won close to a couple of hundred thousand. Now it will start 50 for her. Of course, uh, Katie takes uh, out their son, or he takes her out, whichever way you want to look at it, Craig. Um, and Katie, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it was win 99 when she won with the two-year-old uh, in her career. So there were a lot of stars aligning uh, there for Katie Cox on the night. And uh, time up the hill was simply too good. And she almost pulled the 100 off with Cardi B in the last race yeah. as well. Hindsight's a great thing, Greg. When you look back at that race, it was probably always going to happen. Time up the hill, rolling forward and, and controlling it. But you're right, she's just got that pure speed. The muscle hill factor as well, muscle hill first and second. He is a horse that we probably won't see a lot of his progeny. I think there's only been three foals bred to him in the last three breeding seasons but he's just an incredible sire that I don't think we'll ever get to see the, the dominance of here in New Zealand. Good horse time up the hill. I love watching her race and that speed she showed at the back end was super. Paramount Empress is going to come back and be a, a really nice horse in the back end of the season as well. What she's done and in terms of the times that she's been able to run at the Addington Raceway say that she's clearly got a future as well. 
And you just you can't knock any of the mares in behind when you consider that they've had long seasons. Horses like My Moments Now, who's won eight races at Addington. Miss Alyssa's got a very similar record, and I Dream of Genie. So I know that, that Michael mentioned that there has been times through harness racing where the mares haven't really been that well looked after. But we've got a, a crop of sort of six-year-old plus mares that have all won over 100,000. There's sort of seven or eight of them. So it's not a bad thing to have a good trotting mare in New Zealand. Now, nah, Sue Princess, the Bloss, you know, you, the, the list just goes on and on. So you're absolutely uh, right there. And, of course, you get to see Time Up the Hill again this week. She takes her place off 35 metres uh, in the eighth on the programme on Friday night. The return of Don Morrow on Friday night was another highlight. John Dunn doing the steering on this occasion. Uh, he's, a, he's a really smart horse. And when he finds the front, and he did, he took the lead off Mossdale Ben and... Uh, he was able to outstay him over the concluding stages right about here. You probably thought Mostel Ben was going to get past, but Don Morrow was too strong and is part owned and trained by Roger Austin. We haven't been far from a good horse for a wee while now, but you've got yourself a good one tonight. Hopefully, yeah. No, he looks pretty good, yeah. Yep. What about the build up? To today because it's no mean feat to come to Addington first up and win like that, but you trialled nicely. Yeah, he had three trials. Um, first couple of trials, he probably wasn't quite as forward as we thought he was. Um, so we did it, had a third trial, and um, he went good. Probably in weaker company, but um, Blair said he was he went good, and he said he said you can race him now. So we said thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. He made his way to the front tonight, which he's done a few times, and he seems very comfortable there, and he's beautifully rated. Yeah, well, that field tonight, all of them were, it was probably about four or five horses, all pretty pretty even, and it was just basically the horse with the best run, really, and it just panned out for him tonight. So, yeah, he's pretty hard to beat, like, once he gets to the front like that, and he can get an easy quarter somewhere along the line. He can sprint a pretty good half, and... A lot of them can in that grade, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got a plan, Roger, or was it just a case of getting to the races tonight and working it out from there? No, not really. It was just, it was just a, um, we'll just see how things go. We'll play it by ear, you know. Um, so, yeah, just see what happens. Has he always given you a good horse's feel? Yes, he has. He's been a bit, bit of a handful to start with. It's typical rock and roll dance. Um, but... He's sort of gone the right way, you know. He's 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 sort of getting the push button now, so it's good. Yeah. Right. Well, he's won half his start, so he's got a pretty good record and a great strike rate. So we look forward to seeing what he can do yeah. in the future. Yep, definitely. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, we get to see him this Friday night. He goes uh, round in race seven. Speaking of Friday night, let's have a look at a couple of those races out of Addington Raceway. Two-year-old fillies, uh, Rark Lou. She couldn't have gone much better uh, on debut, I thought, Matthew. That was in behind Vesem in uh, the Diamond Creek down there and then came to Rungiora, sat parked and just dashed away, beating a couple of her race rivals this week in Melody Banner and also Artie B. Mickey. Yeah, a couple of nice horses in behind her, but uh, the confidence of Peter Hunter just to pop off and, and sit outside them and, and put them away, uh, it was a super effort. Only a small field for her, very similar field as to what she met there at, at Rung Yorta. She does draw the outside courtesy of it being preferential barrier, but I, I see no reason why she couldn't win again. Here's Happy Place, finishing second, uh, very good second it was, uh, two behind Anything Goes, who's now having a spell and is being set for the spring and obviously the IRT New Zealand Cup, but Happy Place got itself uh, into second here, comes up with barrier six, Bob Butt back in the bike, uh, he's over his injury concerns, had the operation, looking forward to getting back uh, on his team uh, this Friday, and Happy Place, he's a remarkable story, he was going around in amateur races when he first came down here and Bob's done a, a terrific job with him. So he'll be hard to beat. Don Morrow's in that race. Uh, you've got the likes of Beach Ball who gets a chance to get back into winning form too. So uh, Addington Raceway running alongside that Alexandra Park meeting on uh, Friday night. It's a pretty good programme there too. Let's take another break here on Your Box Seat. It is brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Here's Pandaya, the IRT Maiden of the Week. Here we are at Ashburton in front for Cherie Tomlinson. Dashed away a horse with a big future. And the good thing of the day has bolted in. Pandaya by three and a half beat Maria Alexandra.
in your home straight in your box seat. Let's go across the Tasman uh, with Garrards and we go to Queensland and have a look at Leap to Fame. Here he is returning uh, at the start of this race. He was under enormous pressure to find the front, but once he got there, he dominated. He's won seven of his last eight, including three derbies. Uh, he is the favourite for the Rising Sun. Grant Dixon's got him uh, ticking along quite nicely. Thanks very much. He'll have three or four more runs before he goes in to the Aqua Constructions Rising Sun. And uh, he is the deserved favourite for that, where he'll clash, hopefully, with uh, Merlin, as we know. Turn It Up takes his place this week at Albion Park. He's won a remarkable three quarters of a million dollars. We'll just go over that this week. He's drawn up beautifully. He'll likely to lead again and when he does over the short course he's extremely hard to beat. Let's go to Menangle and have a look at the derby from last week. Kiwi interest, Todd Mitchell driving uh, Nels Adele who doesn't really get clear at all. The winner of the race was rocking with attitude. She won the Oaks last week. Now she's won the derby for David Miles and uh, she's won 11 from uh, 16 and She's a, a wee beauty. Good run, Nels Adele, though. And uh, I spoke to uh, Bernie Hackett and uh, asked what was uh, happening with her. And he said, look, she'll probably come home, give her a nice freshen up. And he's looking forward to heading back to Victoria with her. Thinks he can uh, pick up some good money and, well, have to concur with him there. Expensive Ego was back and winning. He's making his way to the Queensland Carnival as well. Luke McCarthy uh, doing the driving uh, here. 151 1 beats the remarkable Alter Orlando. That's him in the trail. Firefox, who was parked up, and Stingray Tara. So all ex Kiwis in and around. Expensive Ego. He goes to a free for all this week against Alter Orlando again. Uh, Majestic Cruiser returns this week. Of course, he won last year's Blacks of Fake, so he uh, is likely to be heading on a Queensland campaign as well. But expensive ego, too good. Bondi Lockdown will be another that joins him in Queensland for the carnival. And well done with Escape the Pace too, formerly uh, with Scott Field and Barry Purden. Second up in Australia was winning at uh, Menangle on Saturday night too. Rangiora preview time. A couple of good races uh, there, Matthew. They are the Ann Thompson uh, Memorial races. And let's go back and have a look trotting-wise. Uh, Celtic Arden, the first one we want to have a look at here. In front, uh, it can probably find its way there again, Matthew, starting from Barrier eight and just looks a horse to be on the improve. It does Greg, she's a, a little bit raw is a Celtic Harden, if you look at her action there, she's got the half hopples on so not quite the full package as yet. If you go back to the first heat Greg, then the race won by Tarapa, they went 320 and change I reckon you'd be hard pressed to find too many maiden trots that have gone 320, but the form around Tarapa is good. The horse that ran second, obviously, there, Celtic Arden, came out and won, and Kawhi ran third in that particular race, and they will all take each other on again on Sunday. You'd be hard-pressed to say that any of the maidens would be able to beat a home horse like Celtic Arden or Tarapa, but I think they're a great incentive and possibly something that we could maybe do more of here in this country is have the your maiden heats, particularly if you have a club who is racing, say, two or three times within a month, to have your, your heats and have your final, which ensures the better numbers, which therefore will help turnover. So looking forward to that. I, I think Tarapa is a horse who will keep getting better and better as well, so it could be a bit of a danger. Yeah, Mark uh, Jones with a good hand in it too. What the bell storming into third there, and Air I Will went down south and got a win too. So the trotting race is going to be a good one, as is the pacing race. Let's have a look at Uptown Funk uh, getting the job done uh, here. Uh, Storms home uh, in the Yesberg colours uh, in the hands of uh, Ricky May. Uh, it's had a run since then, but on this performance, uh, it'll take some beating. Louis Maguire stormed into second. Uh, there's a couple other performers in the heat too. Sweet Coco was a horse I, I thought was excellent uh, charging home when it finished second behind uh, Sky Rocket. But again, all of the form arrives in the one place, Matthew. And um, yeah, that graduation final will be uh, another excellent betting contest. And those odds will be out at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. I'll tell you another thing I really love, Greg. And I, I don't think we get away with doing it every week because... A hard run 2600 some horses may not back up whereas you, you should of course as they do but 2600 meter races particularly when it's a race like a, a maiden final i reckon they are just pure gold yep. i love seeing them at the addington raceway i think it gives horses an opportunity to get into the race a little bit easier during the middle part particularly in the lower graded races where they do back it off 
I think great work from the club. You have to take your hats off to both HRNZ and uh, Rangi Order for being able to, to get this over the line. Competitive race, Greg. Sweet Coco, first run out of the Crown and Chrissy Delgetti base, formerly with Katie Cox. I, I don't think that Cram would particularly be able to improve one off Katie at the moment, the way that her team is going. But if she races equally as well as what she did on debut, she'll be right there at the finish. Yep, definitely. Uh, let's have a look at where you can race uh, around New Zealand this week. Cambridge, uh, nine race program there, 5.28 the start time uh, for their race meeting on Thursday night, the massive night at Alexandra Park. Plenty of features and plenty of lead-up races to the huge night next Friday night. Ten races there, 5.28, highlighted by the Magnus Benro Sire Stakes three-year-old Phillies Championship. Will she remain uh, unbeaten? 130,000 goes on the line for Millwood Nike, Addington race alongside, 10 races there, 5.18 the start, Invercargill, 9 races there Saturday, 12.05 and then the Sunday meeting out of Rungiora at 12.12 the start time there. Uh, the hand milking best bets uh, this week, Magic Dash, uh, which goes around in race four into Bluto for Graham Hand. What about for you, Matthew Cross, what's the best of the week? Race three, Phillies and Mares Mobile. Number one, Brilliant Lulu is on debut from the Bob Butt stable. We saw a horse when the Phillies and Mares maiden from his stable at Ashburton on, on Friday getting the maiden of the week. And I reckon this time next week, you'll be saying the maiden of the week is Brilliant Lulu. So race three, number one, a horse that showed an incredibly high turn of foot for a maiden that's most recent trial. So I think it'll be winning the third and, and you can make it the best bet. What have you found? Yep, I'll friend? multi it into Oscar Bonavina. That'll do me going around, of Beautiful. course, uh, in the Anzac Cup. Really appreciate you coming on this week, Matthew. Good luck with the calls. And uh, yeah, we'll be back with Michael Guerin next week. But thanks for your time. Thank you for having me, Ben. Catch you next time. All right, we'll see you again in seven days' time on your box seat.